Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, September 16th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're talking about Tropical Storm Fiona today entering the Leeward Islands. I apologize for not starting videos on this storm earlier. My work schedule didn't really allow it. Uh, but we are going to talk about the storm today, and uh, you can see it here moving into the northern Lesser Antilles. Here's a closer look as the sun is about to set, and you'll see a clear center of circulation visibly turning here as it moves just along the northern side of Guadalupe, south of Antigua, and this will continue just north of due west into the eastern Caribbean over the next several days. Now, you'll notice that the circulation is partially exposed here, and we see most of the thunderstorm activity confined to the eastern side. So there is a little bit of westerly shear pushing on the system. You'll see some of the showers up on the northern side uh, push clouds upward, and then these little puffs of cirrus form and then blow off very quickly to the west, kind of showing you that shear. And we can see that that's there on the water vapor satellite picture. Uh, you'll see a lot of that cirrus, again, blowing to the west, some of it out of the south, out in front. It's not even particularly strong westerlies here, uh, but we do have in general a broad zone of troughiness kind of set up to the north of the system. And uh, this is allowing the, the wind in the upper levels to be either calm or slightly out of the west. And because the, the lower level winds are very strong out of the east, that's a strong westerly shear, which is causing the current structure of the system. You also see a region of fairly dark gray here to the west of the islands, indicating drier air here on the water vapor picture that is getting pushed in as a result of the shear, keeping convection from wrapping around the north and then west side, which is what uh, would be necessary for further organization of the storm. It's also a fairly fragile system at the moment. This is the recon mission from earlier in the day, and you'll see that there is a very strong zone of wind on the north side, about 60 miles per hour at the flight level of the aircraft, more like 50 miles per hour maximum at the ocean surface. But you'll notice that the surface pressure is pretty high here, only 1,005 millibars or so, and not really falling during the course of the mission, and hasn't fallen that much over the last few days since Fiona formed. You'll see that the wind is pretty light on the south side. It's very hard to find very strong westerlies here on the south side. And so that tells you that the system in general is rather small and it's, it's not very strong relative to the environment that it's embedded in. While we do have the strong wind, ultimately it is still a weak system. But even weak systems do bring that strong wind to the islands. Uh, we're used to that. Even with tropical waves, we can get strong winds when systems like this come through. This is the European model showing the upper level flow just to illustrate again that the reason there is shear here and the reason there will be for the next few days is that we have a setup here where here's the tropical kind of heat ridge here and then the jet stream in the mid latitudes is to the north and in between we kind of have this zone of weak troughiness, a weak uh, tut uh, embedded just to the north of the Caribbean and east of the Bahamas. So we have this zone of generally westerly flow meandering from the Bahamas eastward toward Africa. And this is suppressed rather far south uh, right now. And so this is imparting that kind of westerly zone of flow right where Fiona is tracking, causing that shear. And that's going to continue for a little while. You'll see that as we go out, this zone of westerly flow aloft continues to exist. And although we do see a nice anti-cyclone above the system, which in general would be healthy for a tropical system because the winds at the surface are so strong out of the east, uh, this is a westerly shear in the net result. So this is going to continue causing issues and limiting development, at least for a couple more days. Now, one of the other aspects of the shear that is, is causing problems is the mid-level part of the flow. This is the 500 millibar chart from the Euro and a little bit of a closer view. There's Fiona here, and you'll notice that this mid-level ridge is kind of oriented southwest to northeast. So if you look at the mid-level flow here, it's kind of directed down toward the Eastern Caribbean out of the Northeast. But again, the surface flow is more like this. So you have a crossing of the flow, again, a source of mid-level shear here, which is making the 15 to 20 knot shear uh, have a stronger impact on Fiona than if it was just confined to the upper troposphere. Now, if we go forward, we'll see Fiona continue moving westward. And eventually this ridge kind of weakens a little bit and flattens out and becomes more east to west oriented. That brings the mid-level wind more in alignment with the direction of the surface wind. And so the mid-level shear is going to go down as the system reaches the vicinity of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. There will probably still be some shear here, but it is expected to lessen somewhat. And this could result 
in some organization of the system as it moves into that region. We can see this if we look at the European model moisture field here, showing mid-level moisture in color. Green is moist, pushed off to the east right now of where the low-level center is, which you can see in the black contours. But as we go forward, the shear does abate slightly. And so you'll see that in general, the environment moistens up more all the way around the system's center. And so as it moves toward Puerto Rico, we start to see the central pressure go down. You can see down to a thousand millibars or lower here as the system nears the Dominican Republic. But you'll see that the moisture field is still asymmetric, mostly on the eastern side, but not quite as displaced as it was or currently is. So there is indications in the modeling that some strengthening is perhaps even likely here moving toward Puerto Rico and eventually the Dominican Republic. And the system will also be slowing down at this point, raising concerns for flooding as a prolonged exposure to the wet eastern side of the system may occur for portions of the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and eventually the Dominican Republic getting into Sunday and Monday. So now we're going to talk about the steering flow, again using the ECMWF as an example. The GFS is rather similar in all respects to what we're about to discuss now, right now, the steering is pretty simple. Again, we have that big ridge to the north kind of directing Fiona toward the west. But we talked about how that ridge will weaken here over the next couple of days. So by the time this gets near Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, you'll see this ridge narrow, become a little bit weaker here, less vigorous uh, flow out of the east, and so pushing the storm less quickly toward uh, Hispaniola. And you'll see a shortwave trough here over southern Canada eventually implant itself over New England, causing further weakening in the subtropical ridge here to the south. So we'll see that happen. Fiona moves very slowly across the Dominican Republic. This short wave digs into New England, so you see this bowing of the contours here. So there's a break in the ridge that the storm now has an escape route east of North America and potentially out to sea in the Western Atlantic. And indeed, most models do show some version of this turn occurring potentially near Bermuda, so that can't be ruled out, but in general, east of North America. But it takes a long time for this turn to happen. Notice Fiona sitting down near the Turks and Caicos. Hasn't moved a whole lot in the prior three days on this particular model run. Takes forever to get from here to here. So again, potential for lots of rainfall over a prolonged period for areas of the Greater Antilles, specifically Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. Now, as this starts making its turn toward the north, you'll notice that the short wave does pull out and moves on. So there is this ridge trying to nose its way in over the southeastern U.S. And in some circumstances, one has to uh, watch for this to get trapped underneath and then get forced back westward. Right now, that doesn't seem like a very likely outcome, but it is something to just keep in the back of the mind as we're watching the forecast for the system evolve because this short wave is a source of uncertainty. It's a very small feature. It's not necessarily going to be well predicted by the models compared to a larger trough. And so if it exits more quickly or is weaker and allows this ridge to nose out just a little bit farther past North Carolina, there is potential that Fiona sits down here too long and ends up getting forced back toward the west, at least temporarily before eventually making some kind of turn. And maybe there's a low chance that it gets uncomfortably close to North America. Right now, that is not the expectation. Most modeling does show a recurve, as you can see here on the European model, a big trough comes in and cleans it up and sweeps it out to sea, although rather close to Bermuda on this model run. In fact, I think this one may actually, yeah, it goes right over Bermuda on this particular model run. But we are also, also talking about a seven to eight day forecast here. So naturally uncertainty is rather high at that range. Uh, there's a reason the National Hurricane Center only gives a forecast out to five days because things get rather cloudy after that time. And sometimes it's cloudy even within five days. But I think this plot here is going to show you kind of what I just said uh, in, a, in a nice nice format. This is the GFS ensemble showing 31 different possible trajectories according to the model that Fiona could take. And you see that we're tightly clustered here on a west-northwestward track toward Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. And at this point, we haven't really talked about the land interaction aspect of the intensity forecast. And as usual, with any kind of tropical system moving toward Hispaniola, the mountains here are quite tall. That causes, of course, a flooding problem, but it also uh, can rip up tropical systems and cause them to lose their organization. And sometimes they don't recover. And if the system moves over the better part of these mountains and takes its time doing so, it is actually possible that Fiona just dissipates. And we do see that some ensemble members do show very weak here in dark blue and green colors, indicating a very weak system kind of drifting off with the low level flow toward the west and not really recovering. That is actually on the table here. 
Right now, the majority of models and the majority of the GFS ensemble members show a strengthening system, these yellow, red, and pink colors turning toward the north eventually as that trough swings by to the north and kind of picks this up and shoves it out into the Western Atlantic toward the north and eventually the northeast. There's Bermuda there, so you can see right now those tracks are uncomfortably close, so we'll have to keep an eye on that within six to seven days. So a lot of uncertainty in this part of the forecast. We'll keep an eye on it just in case there is a chance that it starts uh, turning westward back toward North America, but right now that is not the most likely outcome, and a curve generally like this is the expectation. Right now the four most concerned, you know, gusty winds and tropical storm conditions in these islands. We'll see that here in the tropical storm warnings issued by the National Hurricane Center. So winds over 40 miles per hour likely in these islands as the system moves toward the west, but then especially the flash flooding and mudslides caused by the heavy rainfall, of course, a big problem in places like Puerto Rico, and then down the road here, Hispaniola, as we get into later on Sunday and Monday, most of the rain will be east of the system center. So if the center, you know, is arriving at the tip of Dominican Republic, a lot of the rain will follow immediately after the center reaches that location, since the east side is the wet side. And then you see the National Hurricane Center going with the consensus of the modeling here that a turn to the north will occur and then some intensification. Once we get past the Turks and Caicos and central Bahamas, we may see a hurricane develop given that wind shear will be lessening. We didn't talk much about that, but conditions will get a little bit more favorable for some intensification. So assuming the storm survives the passage of the islands and uh, gets out into the other side, some intensification is likely here, and that's shown in the official forecast. So that's about, about all I have to say for Fiona for this video. I'll be back with more hopefully over the next few days. Stay safe, everyone, in the Leeward Islands, and uh, have a plan ready to go in case you're in a flood-prone area in the Greater Antilles over the weekend. That's it for now. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.